if you go to the Urban Dictionary <clears throat> or, or you just Google, uh, which uh, when did these phrases become so popular? By the way, down bad. Every, everybody's down bad now. Everything's down bad. He's down bad. The fans, fan base is down. This team's down bad. Uh, that and shambles. Everybody's in shambles now too. I guess those those are the two new, uh, whatever. But uh, if if you look that shit up on the internet on Urban Dictionary or Google or whatever, you can look it up. Down bad, shambles, whatever. I did it just a minute ago. The very first definition listed says Ohio State is two and twelve against the SEC in bowl games. <laughs> oh man, uh, and they're not any better in the regular season either. What are they? Uh, five and fourteen all time against the SEC. And uh, I forget when was the last time they even played a team from the SEC. Ohio State. When was that? I don't know. I'm sure it'll come to me at some point. Uh, Ohio State's last game against the SEC. I'm just drawing a blank on it right now. But anyway, Ohio State and Missouri have been matched up in a New Year's Six Bowl this year. And kudos to the playoff selection committee or the bowl committees or whoever. I actually like this one. I think this is a good game, a good matchup. And there are a few every year, a handful every year. I still think the bowl process needs a total overhaul um, I think we need to do away with conference affiliations, and I think we just need to pick good games, good matchups with interesting storylines or whatever, regardless of conference affiliation. And honestly, regardless of record, uh, been over that a million times. We should be watching LSU and Notre Dame this year uh, for obvious, the Brian Kelly deal. Uh, why, why why has it been two years and we haven't seen Southern Cal versus Oklahoma in a bowl game? These are games that people would watch. But anyway... This is a good game. I'm excited for this one. Uh, based on things I hear and what I'm reading, it seems like a lot of people are looking forward to this one. Ohio State and Missouri, and I'm making jokes at the beginning about Ohio State's record. But look, Ohio State needs a win here. They need a win against the SEC. That's just, I mean, they just do. The whole perception versus reality deal, you know, when then well, perception becomes reality. In this case, they're kind of the same. The perception also is reality. I mean, the what, Ohio State fans, they get extremely upset and bent out of shape when you mention their struggles against the SEC or their record against the SEC. They've even gone so far as to start claiming wins against SEC teams when those teams weren't in the SEC. In other words, you know, maybe they beat Missouri or Texas A&M or South Carolina, whatever, just some team. 50 years ago, and that went before they were in the SEC, and they want to count those now as wins against the SEC. But yeah, I mean, Ohio State's record against teams in the SEC when the game is played 2 and 12 um, all time, uh, 5 and 13 or 5 and 14 um, overall, 2 and 12 in, in postseason. And so that is the reality. <clears throat> and the perception outside of a bubble that surrounds Columbus, Ohio, is that. Ohio State just can't compete with the SEC. That, that's the perception. Now, do I think every team in the SEC would just run over Ohio State? Every Obviously not. I mean, what's happening, particularly in, in these bowl games, is Ohio State is either winning the Big Ten, we're coming in second or third in the Big Ten in most years, right? And so they're getting matched up with either a playoff caliber SEC team or the second or third best SEC team. So they're playing good SEC teams for the most part. There's been they've had a handful of down years. Now look, a down year for Ohio State is 9 and 3, okay? But like they're you know, they're winless against South Carolina. They're winless against Tennessee. It's not like Ohio State is playing Bama and Georgia every year. Yeah, they're winless against Georgia all time. Um they have beat Bama a time, maybe two, I think just one. But so, you know, it's not like they're playing Vandy and losing. And, and I know that when you hear loudmouths like me talk about Ohio State's problems against the SEC, maybe that's kind of how it comes off to you. So let me just, I mean, I'll just go ahead and tell you, you know, if, of course, Ohio State is better than the overwhelming majority of SEC teams and programs. Duh. I mean, that's obvious. Um, right now, there's 14 teams in the SEC. In any given year, Ohio State would beat 12 out of the 14, hands down. In most years, it's those top two or three teams that Ohio State tends to be running into in the postseason. And for whatever reason, the SEC has just been, whichever team, the, the, whichever SEC team it happens to be, 
has just been getting the better of Ohio State, not just last year when they lost to Georgia, but over the course of history. Um, you know, we're not talking about a one or two game sample size here from some random period of time when Ohio State was down. We're talking 70 years ago, 50 years ago, 40, 30, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, now. Ohio State just continually gets um, their butt spanked, honestly, by the SEC. And it would be, it, look, does Ohio State itself, the team, the program, need a win over the SEC to get over some sort of proverbial hump? No. Ohio State's not going to be better or worse next year based on whether or not they win this game against Missouri. The, the big deal, really, with the record against the SEC has more to do with the fans, Ohio State fans, and then every other fan on the planet. Because we throw this in Ohio State fans' face all the time. Why? Well, we know it bothers them. That's why we do it. Um, you know, Internet Trolling 101. Um, as soon as you find out what bothers somebody, just keep pushing that same button over and over and over and over and over again. And for whatever reason, Ohio State seems to be... There's a, there's a handful of things that Ohio State fans just seem to get extremely bothered about. And y'all, Ohio State fans, have made the mistake of letting us know that you get extremely bothered by it. So, you hear it over and over and over again. Injury excuses. Weather excuses. Um, uh, the, the, your record against the SEC. We know these things bother you, you know? So, we just keep doing them over and over again. But let's get to this game. I think it's going to be a great game. Um, Ohio State, I think, not quite as good of a team this year as they have been in years past, their defense was better, but the offense clearly took a step back. Kyle McCord was part of the reason why, more on him in a minute, but it wasn't the only reason why. I think their running backs did not perform as well as I expected them to and as I think Ohio State fans hoped that they would. Uh, their defense did take a huge step forward, but offensively they just lagged behind anything resembling an Ohio State offense that we've seen over the last decade or so. Missouri, on the other hand, much better this year than anything Missouri has put on the field in at least a decade. Uh, going back to the early 2010s, they had uh, a couple of really good uh, seasons when they first entered the SEC, actually. Uh, but first time making a New Year's Six Bowl for uh, Eli Drinkwitz in, in Mizzou. And we talk about this a lot during bowl season, especially in the playoff era. Motivation and, and the whole who wants to be there versus who doesn't want to be there argument comes into play in a lot of bowl games nowadays. And in this one, um, this, this this could be a huge factor in this game here. There's not a Missouri coach, player, or fan who is not ecstatic, not only to be in this game, a New Year's Six game, but to have an opportunity in their minds to knock off one of the big boys of college football in Ohio State. So whether Missouri wins or loses this game, Missouri is showing up to play this game as if it is their national championship game. And I don't mean that in an, insult, in an insulting way. Um, Missouri, I mentioned a minute ago, is Ohio State going to be better or worse next year based on whether or not they win this game? No, uh, they're not. Missouri, on the other hand, this is the type of game for a Missouri program that can springboard a program to the next level, potentially, right? Maybe you get a recruiting boost heading into next year's recruiting class, having coming off a win over a program like Ohio State. Um, confidence from a coaching level down to the players. Um, confidence is a big part of college football. And, and for a Missouri team to go out and compete and potentially beat a team like Ohio State, I think could be huge for the returning players on Missouri next year in terms of their confidence level heading into next season. So Missouri's going to show up ready to go in this game. And then you've got the quitter angle. How many players are quitting from each team? I'm opting out if it makes you feel better. Um, for Missouri, none. Uh, like I said, this game means everything to them. Uh, there's not a single player that has opted out of this game. Now, there are a handful of players from Missouri who have chosen to enter the transfer portal. But the Missouri coaching staff has decided to allow those players to remain a part of the team if they want to throughout bowl practice and even the game. So it's possible Missouri is not missing a single player for this game. And even if they are, it's only going to be a small handful, two or three, of non-starters. That's it. Ohio State, on the other hand, Kyle McCord, of course, transferring out, has already committed to Syracuse. 
uh, their starting quarterback for this year. So it'll be Devin Brown, I guess, in the bowl game, who we did get to see play significant playing time early in the season, but at least according to Ryan Day and the coaching staff, is not as good as Kyle McCord. Argue with your mama about it if you disagree. That's not my opinion. That's Ryan Day's opinion. Ryan Day and the Ohio State coaching staff believe Kyle McCord is better than Devin Brown. How do I know that? Because they had an open competition between the two, and they named Kyle McCord the starter. That doesn't mean Devin Brown won't come in and end up being better than Kyle McCord, uh, but it's going to be a surprise to the coaches if that happens because they picked Kyle McCord over Devin Brown. Julian Fleming. <coughs> now, nobody feels bad for Ohio State when it comes to wide receivers. It's an embarrassment of riches at that position for them. But Julian Fleming is their number three wide receiver. You can argue, and it's really semantics, about whether or not he's a starter. It depends on if the first play of the game, Ohio State wind, uh, lines up in three or four wide or only one or two wide. That so, But Julian Fleming, by all the, almost all definitions of the word, would be considered a starter. He is transferring out. You've got uh, the, their second running back, Trainum, is that his name? Some Ohio State fans have argued with me that it's their third running back, second, third, whatever it is. He was your second leading rusher. Uh, on the team this year, um, he has transferred out. And we have not heard yet about Marvin Harrison and Travion Henderson. I would be a little surprised if either of them played, just to be honest. Um, this is not a game that Ohio State, I don't think, is excited to be in after coming off the playoffs last year, being in the playoff hunt this year, really until the last two minutes against Michigan. So as big of a bowl game as this is for Missouri, it's still kind of a letdown for Ohio State. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if we find out soon that maybe Travion Henderson and or Marvin Harrison also are not playing. Now, from what I've read, the majority of the defense for Ohio State will be playing in this game, and that's important. As good as Missouri looked this year at times offensively, this will probably be the best defense they've played. I think Ohio State's defense might be a little bit better than Georgia's this year. They're, they're close. Um, and you can compare the stats and the numbers. Those are all going to be close, too. But I just... You know, I watch a lot of football. I, 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 I feel like Ohio State might have a little bit better of a defense than Georgia. So this this will, well, okay, let's just say this. This will be either be the best or second best defense um, Missouri has played. They've got the uh, number two rusher in all of college football and Cody Schrader. Brady Cook at quarterback who had a, a tremendous season. Luther Burden at wide receiver who is a eventual first round pick in the NFL draft. He's a sophomore, be back next year. Um, they've got some offensive pieces. And honestly, up until the Alabama game, Missouri is the team this season that gave Georgia the most trouble. Uh, Georgia ended up winning that game 30-21 to at home uh, over Missouri. <clears throat> Nine out of ten years, I look down at a bowl sheet and I see Ohio State versus Missouri, and I'm just blindly picking Ohio State to win the game. They're a more talented team. They're a better team. They have a better record almost every single year. They, they just This would be a game you you wouldn't even have to think about. In other words, if this game was scheduled as a, as a regular season non-conference game, you know, a week one or a week two game, <clears throat> no one would even have talked about it in the offseason. Everyone just would have penciled this thing in as an Ohio State win. And to be honest, full roster versus full roster, I'd probably take Ohio State to win this game in the regular season. Um. I'm having a hard time picking it, though, in the postseason as a bowl game for all of the reasons that I went over during the first 10 minutes of the video. Motivation. Missouri's got it. Ohio State doesn't. Opt-outs. Ohio State has them. Missouri doesn't. And a chance to move your program forward. Don't, not, don't really have that opportunity in this game for Ohio State. It, it kind of feels like a no-win situation for Ohio State. If they beat Missouri, people are going to say, well, it's Missouri. Now, I will be impressed because I, I, you know, I know that'll be a good win, but your average college football fan is going to look at this game and just go, it's not impressive to me if you beat Missouri. It will be impressive if you beat Missouri. <clears throat> Missouri, on the other hand, I think could use this game, uh, if they win, as a springboard to maybe up themselves one tier in the college football uh, hierarchy. you got to remember, Missouri's been a 500 team for three years in a row. This is a huge leap forward for them and a big step up in competition versus what they're used to doing in the postseason. And would you be surprised if I told you that Missouri is actually the favorite to win this game? According to the uh, money people out in Vegas, Missouri is about a one-point favorite. Um, now, when a line is that small, depending on where you look, um, you know, you can find this as a pick'em. You can find this as Missouri half a point, Missouri one and a half. 
Um, you know, the site that I use had Missouri as a one point favorite this morning at the time of recording this video. So people expect this to be a close game and I would not be at all surprised if they end up being right. Um, Missouri's going to have a hard time moving the ball on Ohio state. I think, um, defense travels, uh, you know, Ohio state has taken a huge step forward defensively. I just, well, you know what? Ohio State can't beat the SEC. It's really that simple. I don't even know why I talked for 15 minutes. Uh, I think the SEC wins and Ohio State loses again. Have a good morning.